Okay, so I decided to search for supply and demand forex strategies trading. I should have put the word trading in instead of strategy, but uh, this is a different view on, um, I don't know, I guess this guy has a master class he's teaching for free, um, 10, the complete course. This is 40 minutes of supply and demand trading. I don't think he uses the word buy or sell in the whole video. I don't probably even have to go forward to say, did he buy here? Now, this is the place to put on your hedges, I think. As far as supply and demand trading goes, isn't there supply down here in every little dippity do? Every little pullback, every little thing she does is not magic. That's the Amber Heard song. Um, you know, this, I guess he got a five minute chart or something ridiculous here, too. So he tries to get the five minute synced with the one hour synced with an engulfing pattern synced with the perfect setup he's got his room with the lighting he spent some time on this he must have researched this the spectrum and calibrated it and chromoscoped and re-rendered himself into the corner man i wish i had that kind of time I guess I suppose I could do that, but I'm nothing to look at. This guy's definitely uh, young and uh, forexy looking, but or whatever <laughs> he's trading here. Uh, but look at notice the structures here. This top becomes a bottom. Like the minutia is here in front of you. You really don't need to. There's so many. Look at these in micro fat. Look at this little baby pullback. Ah, we'll stop hunt. Coming to the apex of another triangle. Then another triangle stacks. But the breakout here. So the goober that had a buy stop here and a buy stop here. He's good. He's already in the trade. Everybody in every algo is going to stack up at the apex of that triangle. It's probably news is coming out here. There's an abyss that maybe goes back five years we don't even know this kind of price action so to speak is a cause of smashing into the abyss and there's just i mean it could just be like for in forex or any market really it could just take off and go endlessly uh boom and uh, then what are you on the right side of that move that would be the other question are you even in that uh, situation? Do you want to be in that situation? I guess it's the ultimate. Way to put yourself at risk. So if you had the patience, I suppose, to wait for this apex to form, or even this one here, here's the unsustainable sell-off, like these hard sell-offs. Well, that's a buying opportunity. This is a nice gentle pullback to the starting gate of the double top, on and on. Here, the, doesn't even come back here. A little top bottom action there. You got to pull the trigger. But, you know, if this is a five minute chart, one minute chart. Are you really going to chase this thing? Before you know it, it's going to turn its back on you and it's time to sell, right? Isn't that painfully obvious? No, this stuff lasts forever. So. <sighs> What's amazing is this guy is going to wait for it to come back to the demand zone. Now, this is going to go full catawampus. I'm going to spoil alert here. And uh, the swing traders would probably have grids out here, or the grid traders, or just people that say, you know what, if you look back on the left here, you can see Top Tick Tommy's hitting the weeklies, the weekly supply zone. So there's supply zones within supply zones within demand zones within supply zones, fractally speaking. So why does this guy pr pick a particular scenario based on, I guess, just uh, his own particular 
scenario. You always wonder, well, where would you come up with that trading idea? Okay. Great study. And what we have here is the market was in this case not Oof. changing the trend direction, but it was already in an uptrend, a very weak uptrend, which has temporary paused here. And then what we have here is a failure to trend trade. We have this huge breakout. Huge breakout. I must say that is a breakout, man. You were on the right side of that one, but you're going to build. Uh, the spreads might have got wide here. We don't actually know what happened here. This is just a bid, I'm assuming. I don't even see a spread listed on this chart. Another big another big uh, fallacy of trading is that if the spread here is so large that this trade is liter literally impossible to make money. Like So if the spread's like this, and you're talking about this breakout, you're not even in profits till you get here. If you bought... Like if you pull the trigger here and this is the price price you pay, that's the ask. The market has to get to here to you to break even. Yeah, that's a big. You got to show the spread, man. Or tell me the commissions on these trades, for God's sakes. Please give me something to hold on to. A takeaway. This is a take home. And we are here on the New Zealand Canadian yeah. dollar. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where this guy's from, but I'm already like uh, kind of watching my wallet. No. It's got a free course. Master class. I like that master class. How about a master mentorship? Sign up for my master mentorship. Actually, we have a, a bed of nails we have you sleep on to condition yourself for oh, just getting stopped out of scalps. Uh, and this is a very heavily traded forex pair. And to create something like this here, heavily traded, you need to have a huge imbalance between imbalance well it's getting balanced out real fast isn't it the buyers and the sellers so something very very significant must have happened here and on your chart <laughs> yeah people could not the market could not go so, the longer it goes the cause for the effect is the longer it goes sideways the bigger the breakout so it's kind of marching up we can't see to the left very much there but yes something indeed happened there as i will show you later it really pays I'll off that you, you always Pay attention to those huge candles. Listen to me now, believe me later. Candles, because they can help you understand something and they can they. help you find high probability trading situations, as I will show you now. So <laughs> Probably, I show you now. Dude, that was the high. We just missed that entry. Wow. He did not say anything like, man, if you would have stacked up a hedge here, holy shit. With bad ratios, you'd lose your, you'd lose your short leg. I'm assuming the spread is... The, when I describe this, I'm assuming the spread here is like this. If you've got a sell stop, to like if you start, um, every time the market dries up, you just start buy and sell at the market, buy and sell at the market, and your stops are like this, hard stops, to lose a leg. The explosion here, the ratio, <clears throat> three to one, four to one, right? Three and four to one ratios. It's going to give you, and maybe it goes higher. I don't know. But if you even put buy stops here, stacking up, in other words, you're going to lose a leg here. Maybe you have to have minutia in here. You need to glom onto this trade to exploit. I wouldn't say all the moves in the market, but to take advantage of situations like this, this is very low volatility. This is the first breakout. You could have cashed the whole thing out to here, scaled out, or you're still holding. And every time it smashes down hard, you buy a couple of smashes, buy, smash. You got a top, become a bottom. Structurally speaking, it's a sound situation because the path of least resistance is here up up or upward although the path of least resistance is forming here this is the new vacuum forming underneath so either you have the balls to sell into strength you're buying shallow weakness here tight stops you need all different trade plans you're just going to trade one instrument but you've got an 80 pip stop you've got a 20 pip stop you've got a 100 pip take profit you've got a 10 pip take profit you're trading 
you're just a guy that trades this one. You play this one guitar, you know, or you play this one instrument. Or you play multiple instruments. You play, you know, but you're not going to be expert. You can't scalp two instruments at once. You'd have to just scalp the shit out of one. And um, you're done. Like, if you could, if you have the hotkeys available, you could trade a nano account in NASDAQ. I think you could do it with uh, two grand. But with two grand, with a real, with, with $1,000 positions in NASDAQ, you'd have to be like, <laughs> Um, you have to be on it constantly, constantly taking ten, forty dollars out of the market. You're taking, like every hour, you should be making a hundred dollars an hour in Nasdaq. So if you work three hours in the morning, you should make three hundred dollars trading Nasdaq. And all the zigzags. But I don't even know what this guy's talking about here. He's talking about these. Babe, these small time frames and stacking that with the larger time frame going with these crushing moves that happen. It's like, okay, dude, but you could have loaded a fucking swing trade on that. Like supply and demand is like, like there's supply above us that's mind blowing. You look at look at silver crashing. Look at gold crashing. It's hilarious. It's the wealth effect. People that people have margin calls in uh, Bitcoin. So all the hedge funds. That, that are losing have to liquidate their hard assets. I mean, fundamentally speaking, that's what's going on. So they're selling their silver. All the silver stackers are like, you know what? The gas in the car, and I want to go and see uh, Jane tonight and uh, Henry at their yacht, and their yacht takes diesel, and diesel's high. And... Yeah, huh? we're going to have to. Honey, let's sell the gold bars. Let's take that down to the, uh, yeah, so it's pretty tough. Especially if you are somebody that invested in gold thinking that you would be saved. Your gold's going to come back to 1500 When Trump comes back, you're going to have gold at 1000 again. The dollar will be worth a mint. The banks are going to be in heaven at five per certificates the deposit are coming back so you're going to go through the whole cycle again but now the repertoire is bigger because the playlist is bigger from the past you know but that's a whole nother story we don't want to get banned from the uh trading world of uh discussion discussion this is the demand zone very narrow apex of the apex we do revisit the apex of these things though we really do do that that is the truth, but look at this guy. Watch this guy's uh, kind of play. He plays this out. It's amazing. It's all about him, so I have to go back to his commentary, you know, and master class, master mentorships. So we draw our demand zone around the consolidation that existed before the huge candle, and then we extend huge. it into the future. Huge. As we I think he's a Trump supporter. Huge. We did before. Then we don't do anything until the price is. We don't do anything until the price. Now, this is just, I can't even fucking believe I'm hearing this. This must be a tick chart. We don't do anything until the price comes back to this. <laughs> wow. It's coming back into the zone. And again, we don't just trade because the market is back here at the zone, but we need to zoom in. And then we try to come up with a trading plan. So here is where the price. We don't just come in and get in there. We have to come back with a trading plan. Now, for the love of Pete, are you, is this guy serious? Does anybody know the spread of New Zealand cat on a five minute chart? I'm gonna have to look this up. What what is, what is the spread there? Okay, I just looked up the spread. It's seven. This is why this this is so this is so deceiving. This is so fucking ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. This guy's showing us New Zealand versus cat. With only the bid prices. Of course it's dramatic. Of course there's supply and demand. But dude, the spread's seven. I mean, it gets wide. We don't even know the time of day he's looking at this. Come back to supply. Those marks there are big. It's got to be bigger than seven pips. We have no reference of anything here. 
price come back into the zone. And you can see again, we use a trend line because trend lines really nicely help us trade those supply and demand patterns. So we have one, two, three, four touch points, great. And we can also see that pre-breakout, before the market broke the trend line, we already see a slight change of trend sentiment. How about this pre-breakout? How, how do people fall for this shit? Here's the pre-breakout dumb shit back here. He's got this trend line. Here it was. How about this trend line breakout? I, I just, this just drives me fucking nuts. But you know, he's 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 uh, he's got a master class. What about this breakout? Right. Breaks out this trend line. Yes. There's a trend line break here. You could have bought this supply zone. You could have bought this and dumped it, right? No. Uh oh, wrong color box. Yeah. So you could have you could have come in here and done this one, buying this box, dumping into the floor, on and on. Um, shit, you just bought. You just you know what? There's probably some guy that bought everything below here. They just bought it. He put he put just put orders in. He's like, you know what? I'm going to buy here, I'm going to buy here, I'm going to buy here. Um, these people are kidding me with this uh, stuff. He's pulling my leg. Are you pulling my leg? Are you putting me out? So whereas here on the left side. This is here, like I said here. On the left side. Break trend line, come back, confirmation, get in, right? Now, is he going to say buy or sell? We're waiting. Wait for it. From the trend line, the market made lower lows and lower highs. Here, the market started to make higher lows. This is very important because it shows you already that something is changing here in the trend. And at the same time, we have a support and resistance flip zone. So previous support turns into resistance, resistance again. And what we want to do is we wait for the breakout and then we can time our trades using a retest approach. So not everyone likes to trade with a pure breakout. Other traders prefer break uh, retests. And in this case, you can see we have the breakout, the retest, and then afterwards the market took off and the origin was again the supply area. So very important to understand how you can build multiple layers of context. And then once you're in the trade, you can either have a hard target where you exit your trades or you can also exit when you see signs of weakness. So in this example, the market after hitting the supply area, breaking out, it traded higher very nicely until the market here traded sideways. And this is usually a good time to take a trade because when the market is uh, here is entering in a range market, that's the last thing you want to see probably in a trending uh, trade. You want to get out when the market is ranging because your trade idea may not be as valid anymore. Of course, the market could just here pause and then trade higher out of that, but the chances are not as high and this is not a high probability trading scenario anymore. So take what the market is offering you, be happy with your profits and don't gamble away your unrealized profits. And now you <sighs> Wow. I, I mean, really, isn't that the problem? Do I get out? Do I stay? Uh, is the move over? And that spread is seven, by the way. Uh, it's insane. That's a five-minute chart. Now he's going to show us all the trading opportunities here based on the way he perceives the market. And these, these, he's marking off these areas cracking me up. You can see if we extend this zone forward that has been created here, here was the first time that we looked at a trading opportunity here on a trend line break. You can see that many, many times here and here, even here, here. There's a huge fallacy right here. This doesn't mean shit anymore. This is complete bullshit what he's saying. I'm sorry. This is gone. Bye bye It was... It, all that matters now is this high became that high and all of this, all of the... Uh, supply up here is all that matters when this market came back to here well, well fuck uh, you know <laughs> if you're buying this area you, you're gonna buy everything below here that's your everything below here right for this everything below here that's the supply this doesn't have shit to do with it this is so fucking retarded. I can't even describe how stupid this is. Why wouldn't he sell here? He doesn't understand that this supply zone triggered this supply zone. This doesn't matter anymore. There's a guy called So Darn Easy Forex. And I made a video about him. He got all pissed off and threatened me. Dude, this is harebrained speak. The market's not coming back to here. Because of this shit back here, this is order block bullshit. That doesn't matter anymore. You missed this trade. 
buy this supply dump buy this supply dump sell this sell this supply or whatever demand dump this carve out dump this carve out dump this carve out look at these amazing fucking come back to the floor buy come back to the floor there's so many trades in here this idiot is going to wait until he gets and he it's a my draw a trend line here breaks retest we get in here for a ride this why how long is it going to take people to understand supply and demand trading there's supply and demand all around you. There's scalpers at the concert door. There's scalpers on the internet. They're all fucking around you. Every new low is a chance for a, a new a, a comeback recovery. Every breakout of Top Tick Tommy, this vacuum being tagged, this is a full auction here. You come and took out this, you took out this. So, yeah, it's going sideways, right? It goes sideways, and then it stabs both directions. Bing, fake breakout, come back hard, take off. So Wyckoff says, well, before we jump this creek, the creek being the vacuum, right? The, I guess the, whatever you, it, you got to have a scenario. Right now, I'd be selling up into that for some type of scalp back but the trade plan would be how many how uh i swear to god this is the spread on this goddamn currency right here too so if you're gonna buy origin this is bullshit this is fucking bullshit there's origins all according to that shit dude there's an origin here see look at come just only buy here he missed this one. What is wrong with this guy? Stop it. Stop posting these fucking masterclass videos. For God's sake, save us all this fucking complete stupidity fucking nonsense. Dude, the ultimate supply and demand on this chart. Can you find it? Yeah, no shit. If you waited for this fucking tag and bag, like you sold up into this top tick Tommy. God knows it probably looks back on the uh, on the weeklies here or something. And uh, you wrote it all the way to here. You got in and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm just going to sell. Um, gosh, how about above this high? It has nothing to do with this. This guy's got to be kidding. I, with that logic, dude, you should have so many fucking um, buy limits sitting back at this. Well, of course, that there's some kind of support. There's some kind of supply down there. And how it gets there, whether it has to come up here and find sellers or find enough supply to come ripping back the other way. Amazing. That's why I want to watch these videos. I'm like, okay, you, you can make this argument, but it's bullshit. Think about it. Anybody that's ever even seen the market 14 years of trading, this guy thinks that that is some kind of pivot price. Well, y'all yeah, not just... Well, how's it helping you enter this trade? Well, I wait for it to come. It's only coming back to this top. That is true. That's all that matters. It just came back to this top. But this is not the origin for this. In other words, this is the, what is the latest cleaning house we've seen? People that sold here made money. People that sold in that box. Based on this wick tip are, are out of that trade. Back to the last known thing. They've taken the sell. They dumped. That's the trade uh, for the scalper's world. In other words, this bottom becoming a top, they sell into that window. I don't know what the time frame is here, but the spread looks like it's about that much. So you got to, as soon as the, the bid gets hit, there's sellers here in this little window. There's buyers here in this window. There's people buying and selling all around you buy sell here's the stuff that people their heads explode why is the market ripping up so hard i guarantee you this is taking out daily highs weekly highs monthly highs something highly dramatic we can't see to the left down here the same thing if we took out this low here we could go down into disneyland you just blow your mind you'd be like oh, well i have a trade plan for that 
Yeah, no, no shit. Um, some people just want to trade uh, this kind of price action, just up and down, just, you know, hey, buy, sell, we're in and out. Um, imagine there's a guy just waiting for this plunge. He's got a big order bank in here. Um, everybody's aware of this giant vacuum that's been just hit over and over again. So for you to stand out in front of it and wait to get filled, that's going to take a little bit of patience. But if you know you have exposure here to get filled and you got your order banks in and you're like, okay, you know, as they come down here and they start to come right back to his logic, he's missing the origin for this fill. How could he, how could he not say, well, in this, this does matter, right? Cause this has not been revisited, but after it's been tagged and bagged, it doesn't matter anymore. This, this moves caused by the feeding frenzy off of this, this deep uh, vac here. And this is the deepest vac of all. When you take out the lows, probably from a few days ago, and it goes ripping through and it and auctions off this top, it takes off this top, but here's the seller's window. So you can have it both ways. You're either selling into this void or you're buying into this void. Either way. Now, when you sell into this void, you have to be careful because the whole time that this thing's been banging on this, it's been causing this giant vacuum that we're tipping into now. So it's this back and forth between supply and demands. And all the accumulated supply and demand price action based on everything that people get able to liquidate their positions and stuff. So yeah, it's a good time to buy silver now. It's 17 disco prices. At $17, it's a good idea to buy gold anywhere uh, scaling in from here on the way down, right? If you're a gold bug, you look at this as like, well, finally it went on sale, Jesus Christ. Because gold's supposed to be at like, I mean, think about it. It's supposed to be biblical, at a biblical price according to Bull Polney. I don't know if he, Bull, Bull Polney is still doing videos. But who can resist watching that? Watch a lot of those videos. Entertainment purposes only, of course. Let me go back to this guy's video. I can resist uh, the master class. The master blaster class. How to supply supply and demand zones if you if you need to trade them. Yeah, very precisely here twice. He once again. Precisely. Again, and then here on a break and retest, the market started paying attention to this zone. So it it's paying attention to that zone. I told you. Markets just have to pay more attention. And if we could just give classes to the markets, I think this is going to be another thing. We're going to try to oh, get some uh, crowdfunding to have um, help save the market from itself. Dot com. How to keep your market from uh, not recognizing the zones. Contribute to the zone recognition. Sustainable zone recognition program, please, at the bottom click. It all started here on this origin of this huge outlier candle. And then afterwards, after the market has respected it the first time here with your supply area, then afterwards this became a very, very significant, not only resistance zone, but also support here on the break. <laughs> Good God. My Lord. No, I don't think so. Because here, like it just, what he just said violates everything he's just said. This is the order block, buddy. This is the big deal, right? This is the the high water mark. This is the last cleaning house for the really, uh, so the trend traders that, that have their trend lines, you know, or whatever, they're like, okay, well, where are we going to sell? Let's sell when we come back into fair value of this box. Yeah. As soon as we peek our head back into that, yeah, let's grab that. Besides, um, well, with his his logic, I wouldn't use it here, but this bottom is a top. No, not anymore because this is the new um, place to get in for the uh, trend traders. And of course, let's not forget all these glorious, uh, we, we still don't know how many pips this guy's trying to make, but you got this entry, you got this entry, you got just the, the bottom tick batty entry, mind-blowing for this spectacular run. You know, this is probably as good as it gets as you cut into this vac that's been forming here, this shelf. And there's always a vac, there's always a vac itching to be filled. 
And the scalpers have scalped back into the top of that. That trades over. Now what? I say buy limits here, sell limits here, see what happens. You never know. You just don't know, and you don't have to know to make money. You just have to get the risk, the sizing, the order placement. Once you see the nooks and crannies here, the little the little baby vax, it's almost better to do the um, stack baby vax on top of big, big vax and say, oh, dude, once they take out this monthly bar, holy shit, the crush is going to be mind-blowing. And it will be mind-blowing. You've seen it a million times. Once they crack the vac, it's like release the kraken into the void. It is a, a mind-blowing sight. Uh, play back the... Um, just look just go look back in time just take a look back and there's so much data now you can look back into the gold market you can look back into crude oil way back you know 40 years into it and just be look into um was it silver so i was in this jewelry store in new york years ago and i said what about silver 30 years ago i said what well, i said it's five bucks really god i mean it seems cheap Guy goes, well, it trades between four and five bucks, and they just, that's like been be trading between three and five bucks for 20 years. He says, nothing's going on there. And then it went nuts. It went to $50 an ounce. People's heads exploded. I mean, just go back to the silver boom. Now you're back to, uh, we went from $50 all the way back to 17 in change now. Pretty amazing. Hey, God. So you can very often see that after you have identified the supply area, then it becomes support resistance in the future. So it really pays off to know about supply and demand because then you may be able to be once... Pay, pays off. Pays off big. ...step ahead of your trading competition if you know how to find those zones a little bit earlier and get the first trading opportunity in here already. Are you ready for a little bit more of an advanced supply and demand strategy? Now we got... Yes, I am. Bring it. Now take a look at trap zones and how to trade trap zones. So again, in the beginning, we look for everything... Oh, that's what I like to do. As before, we look for a trend change, and then we want to look for the first consolidation, and especially interesting are consolidations before huge candle breakouts. So here you can see, this was the turning point. Here we already had a small consolidation, but here, this is really where you want to get your supply zone in, because you can see this here is a huge, significant candle. And this is probably when you look left. This, you won't see that often. And whenever you see such a huge candle breaking out, out of the supply zone at a trend change, this is really where you need to have your supplies ready for the future. So we draw it from the bottom of the consolidation to the height here. We extend it forward, and then we wait like before. The trap comes a little bit later, as we will see. So... This is how we draw the zone from the bottom to the highs. We extend it forward, all the same. And then this is the first time the market is back in the zone. So we have a break and retest pattern. Again, we don't trade short just because the market is at the supply zone again. We wait for a pattern to emerge. What? Dude, the trap, you missed it. This is the trap. This is nuts. This guy's nuts. He needs help. Come on, I'm sorry, is it just me? Here's the trap. All the bulls are trapped up here. You're selling this. This is the trap. Todd Tick Tommy. The fuck is this? Sub supply zone. He's going to wait for a setup after this. Let me guess. He's going to wait for confirmation. He's going to wait for this thing to go all the way back up to the supply zone. Oh my God. I can't take it. I can't take these people. <laughs> they just blow my mind. It's happening in front of you. He's waiting. Consolidation to the height here. We extend it forward and then we wait like before. The Look how much money he could have made already. Not to mention, what about this trap zone? Doesn't he understand there's people on the other side of the trade buying here in this trap? Jesus Christ, the whole trade's over. <laughs> Full auction, dude. I mean, we, we've taken out the high and we took out the low of this zone. Total wraparound. Granted, it's a very giant wick on the top, but that's this engulfing pattern. For right now, you're closed here. You uh, started here. You just wrapped that whole seg segment around it. Did you not? I, I, what's What am I missing? Wrap comes a little bit later, as we will see. So... This is how we draw the zone from the bottom to the highs. We extend it forward, all the same. And then this is the first time the market is back in the zone. So we have a break and retest pattern. Again, we don't trade short just because the market is at the supply zone again. We wait for a pattern to emerge. He did use the word short. We don't. We don't even get short there, dude. We don't even get short there. We wait for this to come back. 
and make a topic of a pot up for confirmation. Is this guy serious? Well, at least, at least he's not using Fibonacci. Can you imagine him getting his Fibonacci tool out to go for a little Fibcom confirmation? Fib, Fibcom. Fib, Fibcon. Good Lord, man. He's got a book he's selling. He's selling a book, though. He should. <laughs> this is not helping me at all today. <laughs> I thought the trap trade, I thought I was going to agree with him, but nope. In this case, you can see here we have a resistance area, which turns into support, and on the breakout turns into resistance again. And this is where break and retest traders get in. So you mean, <laughs> you're going to pull the, you're going to babysit this whole motherfucker. Wait, let me see if I get this straight. Based on the whole thing we've seen, you're going to wait to get into this new, this giant spread thing on this five-minute chart. You've got to be kidding. On the pin bar, when the market is moving away, that's when many traders... On the pin bar, that's when many traders, only the winning traders that trade this supply and demand, a short. If you've watched my latest price action uh, course here on YouTube, which is completely free, the link is in the description below, you will have learned about this pattern as well. But the... <laughs> Mine's free too, buddy. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, what can I tell you? All my criticisms are come free. <laughs> you don't have to pay for my criticism. Just endure my... My punishing rant. The trap comes after that. So after the market has uh, moved into the supply zone for the first time, <sighs> if you are first time, I like how he picked out this big zone. Why didn't he go with the discrete order block precision of an ICT? Bottom right here becomes a top right to the tick. Why doesn't he point that out? Here's a top become a bottom. You could have jumped on the train here based on that fucking top become a bottom logic. This is all here, brain shit. He, there's a top become a bottom here before this one. Which one do you want to do? Right? Which one do you want to do? Let's not talk about the traders that are up on their trades right now because they, they bought the trap down here. Is this guy serious? Everybody that bought the trap down there, if there was no spread, they're up on every fucking trade. So I, what the fuck? Is this guy serious? Do I have to keep saying that? It sounds like a fucking loop. <sighs> oh, Lord. Can't take it. Why do they make me watch these videos? Uh, a little bit more experience. You can leave those zones on for maybe one or two more touch points. So let's see what happens. One or two more touch points. Yeah, you know what? Add, maybe add to the position there. <sighs> Look at this stuff. Oh my God. He's picking out this zone again and bringing it forward. There's so many trades on the chart based on what he just said. How can anybody avoid that? It's like, once you show me how to um, make ice cream, I'm, make, I'm making every flavor, dude. Happens afterwards. The market comes back to the zone, but it overshot the zone by quite a bit. So let's try to move in and zoom in here and let's see. Zone in here. Once you don't see a zone, you lose money. What we can actually find here. So you can see the market overshot the blue zone by quite a bit, as I said. And again, this is why we never trade supply and demand zones blindly, because sometimes... <laughs> we never trade blindly, because sometimes we could be wrong. Oh my God, this guy is so afraid of losing money. The market will overshoot it. And if you're already in a short trade when the market gets to the zone, and then you see the market's moving significantly against you, that is not a good place to be in. And then many traders will... <laughs> well, I mean, how big are these trades, dude? Like, this guy's kidding take a loss and then the market turns around maybe maybe not and then this can maybe maybe not but with our precision supply and demand entry with reconfirmation triangle carried forward five years into the future based on an order block from 10 years ago we predict this is the ultimate trade entry you will not be able to lose there's a 60 percent chance be right. it's become very frustrating however frustrating. don't trade those zones blindly but instead what we're doing is we wait for the price to get to the zone then we look for a trend structure we, we can use as i showed you before we can use a trend line we could use a horizontal pattern like in this case where resistance turns into support it really nicely helps us to define price within a fixed boundary that's very important and then we could trade the breakout so in this example we have a few things going for this trading idea we have the higher supply and demand area we have a trap pattern which is very commonly traded as well so he's not going to sell these traps up here although he claims he's a trap trader this just goes against every it just doesn't make no sense so imagine you sold this trap and presupposing you're not selling uh 
like so this is 0 0.001 of your account this is 0 0.002 of your account and this is 0 0.003 of your account you're in you're risking half of your uh, point 0.5 instead of 2% you're risking 0.5 you trade small you trade off and you have all these tickets up here right maybe this bank is going to cost you um, 10 bucks this bank cost you and inside of here if there was no spread you've got little cash outs right inside the boxes you could be cashing out uh, your swing trades or maybe you pull the trigger every price pulse up you sell you sell at the market when you get to the double top and top tick tommyville you already know there's a vacuum forming underneath here based on this trend line is showing you the space below right all this space below is the pending vacuum like it, it backfilled so it's getting here's a kind of a break trend line but I'm not the trend lines just there to show me a triangular vacuum itching to be crushed just like the vacuum above us I think this is an original breakout actually um this might be the same instrument I can't tell but this is just your typical smash. It's gushing into something looking back here. There's a big. But what do you do about it? You know, can you scale into this? You should. You should scale into that. And maybe you do sell a couple. Oh, look at this. I, I'm selling with a 80 pip stop. I'm selling with a 30 pip stop. Have your tickets on deck if you're a market trader and have the limits, grids placed if you're. You know, maybe this expiration here is eight hours, expiration four hours. The closer to the market you are, the shorter the expiration naturally to, to comply, comply with momentum rules. That is, the market drops at this rate of change, and you're front running it with 30 minute tickets. It's different than if it's dripping down four hour into a vacuum, and you know that, like on the weeklies, this is a big supply zone here, so you put a an eight hour ticket here in the in the middle of the night it stabs and, and it comes out of it depending on your targets as you come out of this little iceberg whatever you drop whatever you plan on and somebody right now is on the other side of this trade that this guy's talking about is that this is the only way to make money a big another fallacy this is not the only way to make money there's guys buying here 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 there's somebody who's long here right now looking for it to come back to here there's people that are buying here looking for it to come back to here they've already planned the trade out there's people selling the the top become a bottom I don't know why he's not showing this trade either um, how, how he doesn't see this based on he what he just said here's a bottom becoming a top right you break out you pull back here's your chance to sell right comes back to the pivot within a few pips here well, you, you breach it come back sell that rally ride the plunge got to take profits here though right so people are cashing out here this is the new buy window and here is the uh, where everything left the station you know before this gushing move I think that's what we saw earlier but you know, there's a, there's a big supply slot down here, and this is going to be the deepest, most sought. When you come off of this, there's going to be high drama off of that. Just like there's high drama off top tick Tommies. Yeah, it all comes together there, but you have to anticipate the break of the trend line. You're not going to wait. But this guy's a complete... He's, he's a complete pussy. There I said it. This guy's a wimp. There's a wimpy little room with this wimpy little light. Oh, my Lord, please. One of his students is going to come after me now. I can't believe what you said about my my master class. The mentor. <laughs> Just terrible. This guy's. And look at the comments on here. Wait till you see the comments. Like, brace yourself for the comments. Here's the ultimate beginner's guide to supply and demand trading right there. There's there's a um, trend trader. At least this guy's like, buy the pullbacks. Jesus Christ. 
I had the comments on here. An eye-opener, extremely useful information. Thanks a ton. Hey, he's talking about me there. He means simpleton, I think is what he means. Awesome content. Loved how, how calm you were while delivering this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not able to do that. You got me there. Awesome content. Loved how... Yeah. Uh, hello. Thank you so much for great content videos. I really hope you have time to answer this question. Why is it so hard to see and find supply and demand zones on the S&P daily time frame? Hmm. It's not. I think there's just not that, that many. I don't think so at all. Just look for new lows and new highs. In other words, supply and demand is just old prices we haven't seen in a while. So there's a lot of demand when stuff goes half off, you know, um, which is what's happening right now in the stock market. So it's been the biggest buying opportunity in the stock market, really, you're going to see in a long time because it's obvious that uh, it's near, it's closer to fair, real value or fair value. As everything equalizes, it's a reset. So they're crowded markets and hedge funds and all the money behind the other instruments. So there's a stacking effect. There's so many instruments now, if you consider the whole crypto world, so you have massive instruments and the pecking order of those instruments and sector rotations become very dramatic, I think, at this point because you can go into all sorts of stuff. Real estate investment trust, that was REITs. We, I used to be in REITs. And that was like, you could sit back and just make like crazy, uh, safe money. Um, great, great explan explanation. A quick question. Can supply and demand zones on lower time frames be used in consolidation on a larger time frame? Been searching for... A why to trade for a why to trade consolidation on a higher time frame. A theory there are trends on lower time frames during a higher time frame consolidation. Well, of course, there are. The problem is, you have the execution tools to even ride these things that people talk about. People talk about. You know, is there, so, yes, there is all that is true. Can you take advantage of it? Is there a way to jump on the five minute trend, which is riding the auction engulfment? So if you take out the low of the previous day and you ride the 15 minute um, trend, which you can see clearly as it makes, um, I, I'm defining a trend as a, the pullbacks are coming back and forming tops become bottoms. There's no break in this beautiful drift or beautiful. Um, like so on the one minute chart, it may be a trend on the 40 second chart during the news. That's a trend. But, you know, it's just a one minute psycho wick. Sure, there's a trend on the tick chart, you know. On the two second chart, there's a trend that looks like tradable, but, you know. Are you going to jump on a two-second chart? Like, where's the breakout? You know, I mean, so all this is theoretical, really, and most people do like, because they want to feel secure. You can see this guy's worried about, um, he's been searching for a why to trade a consolidation. Dude, just, just put on a hedge during consolidation. You'd be surprised how much money you can make from paying extra, in other words, the insurance policy is something's got to give. This is a known fact of life that markets don't go sideways forever. So how do you build that hedge? I would say, well, if, it, if it's down a little bit, buy. If it's up a little bit, sell. Build a winning hedge with tight stops during Asia. If you build a winning hedge with tight stops during Asia, by the time Europe opens, it's going to be beautiful.
and you'll be making money in a way that you didn't think was possible because most of what this guy is doing is complete bias as to whether he's going to, and he has confirmation issues. He's going to attract people that think like him. So I attract a lot of crazy people. That's kind of a problem sometimes. So being, being pissed off and depressed myself like all day, well, not really, but I mean, that's the, the underlying tension that you need to, <laughs> to have, uh, to accept that everybody's unique and the, every moment's unique in the market. So it's very hard to accept that, uh, but that, uh, your best laid plans. This is why backup plans work. If you buy at the market, this guy's selling like, okay, I know everything, all the stars are aligned. He pulls a trigger. God knows where a stop is on these things. I guess they're going to be psycho tight because he's so certain about this trade, this one trade. So what you know, you, you know, you're just so much focused on one trade. But if you're if you're a trader or if you're a musician, how many times have you played that 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 note? And you, and some of your frets are worn out from playing the same chord over and over again. So consider that you know well in trading it's the same thing there's no difference i don't think the keyboard that has the buy at the market key maybe the the font's worn off the lettering's gone but you can see these people's mindset it seems so easy when you explain it but it's hard in practice no shit but thank you always for the depth course always learning something new and useful yeah, me too, but maybe not the way he, he wants me to learn it. But I would say, certainly, I'm looking through his eyes, you know. Absolutely fantastic. Well done. I can tell you have a refined your craft because you could explain it so easily and quickly. Uh, kudos. I think kudos is like, you go, girl. I'm not sure, but something like that. Thank you, sir, for this. That was well detailed. Stay blessed. Who said he was even blessed to begin with? This is a good one. Traders with no experience in financial markets repeat the same mistakes that cost them dearly. <sighs> Gotta have some smart money. Smart money concepts, too, is what he's doing here. It's all the same thing. The whole idea of buy low, sell high. Finally, somebody explaining good the confirmation you need to wait for. Thank you. So here's a guy who believes in confirmation. Finally, someone explaining good. I think he means uh, some explaining the goodness of uh, confirmation. Hats off to you. You're such a wonderful training session. Oh man, what a session. Feels so good. My back feels looser. That, that that too absolutely free keep up the good work oh he replied very comprehensive you explain things very well a little too well for me um i've been following your videos found them really useful many thanks for sharing this master masterpiece class oh my god how about the mentor masterpiece class class how about how about the symposium on mentorship masterpiecing how about the emporium of master class strategies dot com thank you so much for this video this video has so much information I've watched all your videos. Is there <laughs> any else in the course which not covered? Oh, psycho other than psychology and trading. Please let me know. Price action supply and demand. So, is there any else in the course which is not covered? Does he not do that, maybe? I don't understand. I can't read, they can't write, so what are you going to do? 
Sir, it's a beautiful explanation session. Golden line was nothing. Work 100% in time to search for opportunities. Presented in a good manner. I was, this guy's very mannerly. Uh, very nice content presented in a good manner. Very useful information. You seriously deserve more million subscribers. Good luck. Thank you. Very awesome course. I really learned a lot. Thanks so much. Great content. Nobody's saying, man, I, I did that trade you talked about. Fucking blew my mind. <laughs> Very nicely explained. He's a good explainer. Hmm. Very well mentored. Different aspect of selecting. He feels mentored, this guy. Hey, mate. We know where he's from. What up, mate? Hey, Bronus. Dude, man, bro. Man, thanks so much for the information. Thanks a lot. Learned a lot. He's got comments to beat the band. He's amazing. He's so amazing. Kate Bush even agrees. What is it? What is the deal? Look at this. When did he post this? My God, man. Yeah, that's amazing. 281 comments. Let's sort by the newest. Wow. So five months ago. Man, look at this guy. People love this guy. Supply and demand indicator. Yeah, what's going on here? No. What does that look like? Well, here you go. Automated supply and demand uh, zones. Huh. That's not the ones I would pick out. Hmm. Yeah. It's really not going to help your position sizing, is it? <laughs> oh, 120 bucks. Shit. Oh, my God. I got one that's free. It's called the Zone... It's called the void fill. Yeah. Shows the latest supply and demand. Void fill. It's free. Oh well. <laughs> 120 bucks for the supply and demand. Oh, Jesus. So, as you were, as they say. <laughs> 